Want more Gators Breakdown? Join Gators Breakdown Plus. Starting at $3 a month, get access to unique episodes, plus a blog, chat room, giveaways, shout-outs, and more. Gators Breakdown Plus is furthering the interaction with fans and listeners like you. Head to gatorsbreakdown.supportingcast.fm to join Gators Breakdown Plus today. Gators Breakdown, because there's never a dull moment in Gator Nation. The Gators Breakdown podcast is ready to go. I'm your host, David Waters. You can find me on Twitter at GatorDave underscore SEC. And another day, another coaching change for the Gators. Yesterday, dealing with the NFL, Patrick Tony Pigler going to the Arizona Cardinals. And one more coach now going to the NFL, wide receiver coach Kerry Colbert going to take a wide receiver position with the Denver Broncos in the NFL. So two days, three moves for the Gators coaching staff, all going to the NFL. So we'll get into it right here on this episode of Gators Breakdown. Everybody hit that like button, hit that subscribe button before we move forward. Almost 11,000 subscribers right here on YouTube. Everybody, thank you so much for being subscribers to Gators Breakdown. If you haven't, please do so. Please do so while we're doing this. And uh, Gators Breakdown Plus, I mean, with the coaching changes yesterday and today, the conversation has been crazy. We're talking hot board. We're talking ne- who's next. I'll get into that to, on this episode of Gators Breakdown. I'll throw you some names uh, before I sign off on this episode of maybe who to look out for next uh, in, in, in replacing these coaches here. But the conversation has been going on on the Discord, on Gators Breakdown Plus. Link is in the description. All right, Kerry Colbert leaving for the Broncos. Let's get right into it. And he's, as I said, third coach, leave for the NFL the last couple of days. And this is the first one that kind of really hurt. Uh, And you look at it, he's, it's not a lateral move. Yes, it's a wide receiver position coach in the NFL, but it's in the NFL. So that's what makes it not lateral. (laughs) This is an upgrade uh, for Kerry Colbert. And, you know, Tony Pigler, not huge departures. In my opinion, as far as not being replaceable and combining that with the outlook, Colbert had a pedigree of development. Look, going back to a year ago when he was hired, not a lot of excitement around that name. I I think I felt better about it than than some people did. Uh, But, you know, then recruiting rolls around, class of 23, the wide receiver position. He recruits that really well. Well, not being able to sell much on the field uh, as far as, you know, the Florida offense goes. And I really like this last class, but he had a pedigree of development. That's what I liked about it. And and sending guys to the NFL, you know, so much now that the NFL team wants him for that development and the pedigree of sending players to the NFL. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr., um, Amon um, Ross St. Brown. Drake London, all players that Colbert had a part in sending to the NFL and and those guys having success. So I thought Justin Shorter, you know, going to the Florida side of it now, put together his best season as a Gator, especially, you know, the the one year under Colbert here, 29 catches, 577 yards, two touchdowns on the year. But that was more than what he had in 2021. And Justin Shorter missed time. I thought was more of a downfield threat this year for the Gators showed something on a more consistent basis that we haven't seen from there. So I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, this Florida raw receiver class this past year, uh, that makes it seem like why I don't want to lose Kerry Colbert. I mean, I think there was a lot of things why the receiver position, you know, quarterback play has a lot to do with it. Very inconsistent quarterback play there for the wide receivers. Uh, and just the receivers themselves, I, mean, I don't think Florida had anybody special uh, at the position. And that's why I really like this 2023 class because I think those three guys Florida brought in Andy Jean, Aiden Mazel, and Eugene Wilson, I think those guys can make some plays for Florida. And I was really excited to see the development history, the pedigree, the reputation of Kerry Colbert with those three guys. And another year with Ricky Pearsall, Xavier Henderson. I mean, I was was maybe sneakily excited about the receiver position of course, quarterback play was going to come into that for this year, too. We go with Graham Mertz and, and whatever happens at the Florida quarterback position. So, but as far as receiver goes, just looking at pure receiver, I was happy with the outlook of the position with Kerry Colbert. 
But now he's going to go on, take his talents to the wide receiver coach of the Denver Broncos. So, of course, you know, this is the now third move in two days for the Florida Gator coaching staff, all to the NFL. It's not like they're leaving for other schools. This is late in the process, as I kind of mentioned yesterday in the Patrick Tony William Pigler episode, that, hey, this is um, this is early in the NFL timeline, coaching changes going on in the NFL. And you're seeing it right here, the two staffs that are hiring these Gator guys or new staffs in the NFL, they're making you know, brand-new staff hires. And they're going to the college ranks to fill it out, specifically Florida. Now, this is the you know the, the um, defensive pretty much analyst or what Patrick Tony and Evan Pigler are going as, um, you know. So maybe just to get away from the college game, I'll get into that in just a second. But you know, it's not like these players are leaving for other schools; they're leaving for the NFL. And I think for a couple of reasons. First and more so for Colbert, same position, but in the NFL, it's an upgrade. Go coach football. And that's kind of the last part that leads me to the other reasons. College football right now is changing. A lot more demanding for coaches. You know, the head coaches at the college football level, they, they're, they're making the buku money. They're making a lot of the money. They get to deal with all the headache, but get paid for it, that paycheck at the same time. The assistant coaches, eh, not so much. Money's still good. Better than the NFL in some places, but not the headache. College football is changing, and it is uh, I'm not 24, but an 18 hour day a lot of the time, and football aspect, the recruiting aspect, and now dealing with NIL and the transfer portal. It's a lot more than just football at the college football level. At the NFL, it's football, it's watching film, it is coaching, it's developing, and it's all football. No recruiting, no making phone calls, no catering to 17-year-old kids. In this new world of NIL and all that, you're going to see more coaches leave the the college game, especially all these assistants out there, and go to the NFL if the opportunity presents itself. So many more variables outside of just coaching right now in college football. But these are taxing demands of recruiting and coaching, developing, NIL, transfer portal. You're constantly recruiting the players that are on your roster. There's not a, you know, there's just so much outside of football and the headache of dealing with it all. I just think of all the headlines that surrounded Florida over the last year or so. Just kind of, I mean, look, there's a reason this podcast has the moniker there's never a dull moment in Gator Nation. It's not easy. And Billy Napier, he gets paid, being the head coach, he gets paid very handsomely for that. Assistance now? I'm not so sure. They're going to sit here over time and year over year see the benefit of the college game and the way it's going and what they have to deal with. I mean, all these headlines for Florida, I mean, this has just been ridiculous. Think about all the coaches that had to deal with that. So I think you'll see more and more college coaches get to the NFL if they can because it's about football and not all the other items college football coaches have to deal with. Now another aspect of these moves is the timeline. So close to spring practice. It's now Gators are starting spring practice March the 4th. Next weekend, now have two openings on the staff. Armstrong, of course, Austin Armstrong. But not officially announced, but going to take over for Patrick Tony on defense. There's still two more openings right now on the Gators roster. So their timeline's really weird with this because of the NFL timeline. And this kind of goes to the point, and I know this has kind of come up, of whether these moves were forced or not, it makes no sense for these moves to be forced. Now, if they showed interest, were they not covert? I mean, Billy Napier would have kept all three of these guys. But I'm not necessarily sure. And the moves weren't forced, but if these guys showed interest in going to the NFL, I'm not so sure how if Billy Napier was kind of pulling them, pulling them back in the door. Oh no, don't go, don't go, don't go. Colbert, I can see that. Tony Pigler, not so sure. I'm not sure Tony's head, the, his wife, and social media, and getting hounded at games and. 
you know, the pressure, the criticism that come with be de- defensive coordinator at Florida was all it's cracked up to be for him. I think he was just ready to go. And yeah, I don't, these moves weren't forced. I don't believe that for one second. Because just think about the timeline. If you're going to make these moves, specifically for Tony and Pigler, you make them sooner. Not in late February. Not right before spring practice. When the coaching pool's been mostly settled. And right now, the timing of it right now, some guys are not going to want to leave where they're at. It's late in the process. They're about to start spring practice. Recruiting doesn't play a part in the timeline here. Florida's recruiting class was pretty much completed in late December. If these were forced moves, that would have happened in January. Not basically a week and a half before spring practice. So I think because of the talent pool, the coaching talent pool being kind of solidified right now and other guys coming, you want it when everybody's making moves and you have a pool to choose from. Now it's kind of late in the game for college coaches. You would have made these moves sooner if they were forced moves. So with all that in mind, that timeline in mind, well, yeah, it's time to talk a little bit of replacements, right? A lot of names been floating out there. Jeff Scott, Dwan Sider, of course. I mean, that name pops up every time there's an opening on the offensive side of the ball at the skill position spot. <laughs> uh, so, of course, that's uh, no, no surprise there that his name popped up. Of course, Jeff Scott, that's the two most popular names uh, coming out right now, but a couple of names floating around right here on this late Thursday that I'm hearing a lot of as this day has progressed. Not so popular out there. Justin Stepp, maybe as a wide receiver coach, and they're at Keysaw at tight end. Nothing finalized, but those are the names hearing the most as this day goes on. As I said, Jeff Scott's name's been thrown out there along with Jawan Sider as the, the top of the puppy wish list for a lot of the fans out there. I know conversations have been had with Scott, but he's not expected to leave Clemson, from what I hear. Multiple people. After being fired from USF, getting hired back to Clemson, going back there with Dabo. At the moment, I wouldn't expect that one to happen. So the two names right now, hearing the most, I'll give you a little bit of background, maybe why, and some more targets possibly, but just the names hearing the most right now, Eric Keesaw recently just joined the Florida staff a few weeks ago. 50 years old, spent one and a half seasons at Auburn under Brian Harson. the last two seasons before that, fa- that staff was fired in October of last year when Auburn had fallen to three and five. Now, Keesaw was actually Harson's third offensive coordinator in that time frame. In that season and a half, he was the third offensive coordinator. Harson's first choice, Mike Bobo, failed. Bobo couldn't get it done. Keesaw was already on the staff at Auburn, but then he decided to hire from outside, bringing in Austin Davis, 32-year-old with three years of coaching experience, all of them with the Seattle Seahawks. He got the job. That lasted six weeks. So only given a third opportunity to fill the job did Harson turn to Keesaw his offensive coordinator at Boise State the two years before he came to Auburn. So to summarize, when he was hired at Auburn with Harson, he was hired as the program's passing game coordinator, wide receivers coach, promoted the offensive coordinator quarterbacks ahead of the 2022 season. He had four seasons at Boise State previously with Keith Al Manning, the quarterback and wide receiver coaching roles each season, as well as offensive coordinator duties his final two years at Boise State, before they went to Auburn. So his connection? Keesaw was an offensive analyst for Alabama in 2015, where he, walked, where he worked alongside Florida head coach Billy Napier. So that would be for the tight end role. 
possibly. And now for wide receiver, the one that just opened up today with Kerry Colbert going on to the Broncos, Justin Stepp, he's the wide receiver coach at South Carolina. Been there since 2021. This past season helped Antoine Wells Jr. to a 68 reception year, 928 yards and six touchdowns. There was Spencer Rattler in that South Carolina offense. His first season at South Carolina, two years ago, Stepp was instrumental in helping Josh Van put together his best season as a Gamecock. To become a quality SEC receiver, Van led the team with 43 catches, 679 yards, after logging just 47 catches for 377 yards over his first three seasons. So basically, as far as receptions go, the same receptions in one year and three years, as in three years for Van, but then almost doubling his yardage output. But for whatever reason, Van's production dropped out to only 18 catches, 296 yards, and three touchdowns last season. Uh, but before that, Step spent the prior three seasons prior to 2021 as wide receivers coach at Arkansas. During his time in Fayetteville, he had five players combined for six 400-yard seasons and 26 touchdowns. 2020, sophomore Traylon Burks became the first Arkansas wide receiver to earn all SEC recognition since 2015 after he hauled in 51 catches, 820 yards, seven touchdowns. Uh, 2019, Burks and Trey Knox were one of the top freshman receiving tandems in the country, combining for 57 catches, 860 yards, most among SEC freshmen's duos. Off the field, Step was named as one of the nation's top 25 recruiters by rivals thanks to the addition of four four-star receivers for Arkansas. They were the only team in the nation to sign four four-star wide receivers in the 2019 class. So, of course... Did a lot of you know, did some research there for you guys to get the names for Justin Step and Eric Kiesel out there. You know, went into that detail because that is the names I'm hearing a good bit. I know not the home run names. Uh, you're not, not not telling me anything I don't know, and something I'll definitely agree with you on. Not the uh, not 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 the home run names you're really wanting, expect maybe even expecting to hear. Not you know, not sure what your expectations are for for filling the the wide receivers and tight end positions on this coaching staff. But I know when wish list and big boards come out from, I mean, from, from me, myself, as a fan, and you out there, these guys wouldn't necessarily be at the top of it. Doesn't mean it wouldn't work out. Doesn't mean they wouldn't be good in the end. But bringing up those, because that's the, that's the names I'm hearing the most right now. With other coaching candidates, we'll go to the wide receiver, coach opening. Ike Hilliard, former Gator receiver, of course, in the 90s. Playing under Steve Spurrier. Played in the NFL. Drafted seventh overall. But coached in the NFL for quite some time. Coached for the Miami Dolphins, Redskins, Buffalo Bills, Pittsburgh Steelers. As a wide receiver coach in the NFL. And he was at Auburn last year, his first year in college. Not part of that staff. Hugh Freeze decided not to retain him. So he's out there. I saw him liking tweets today, talking about maybe his name coming up. It'd be one of my top choices. If somebody like Jeff Scott wasn't available, I hear you would be probably my top choice, given his background of coaching in the NFL and these wide receivers being a Gator. That's a plus. Definitely, definitely maybe a tiebreaker that's out there. You know, if you're, if you're looking at uh, coaching careers that, that are out there and maybe some of these options. But I have to think, you know, him out there liking tweets with his, his uh, with his name thrown into the mix. Maybe means something that he'd be excited about taking the job, returning to his alma mater. It'd be a pretty cool story as well. Let's see. Um, Dallas Baker, another former Gator. His name coming up, because he's at Baylor. First Power 5 job. 
Was that Marshall before? And then Buffalo? And now went to Baylor, joining Dave Aranda's staff right there in the Big 12. So two former Gators. I carried at Auburn last year. NFL wide receiver coaching experience. And now Dallas Baker getting a power five job at Baylor. You know what? He'd make a move this late. Possibly. Uh, and then David Decker. He's on Florida staff already. He's a grad assistant. Would, they, would he promote from within? As part of Billy Napier's staff at Louisiana. Came to Florida as well. So he was, a wide, he was actually a wide receiver for Louisiana 2015 to 2017 before Billy Napier gets there. Went to LSU in 2018. Billy Napier brought him back as a off-field assistant at Louisiana. So two former Gators to look out for. Maybe his options. Justin Stepp, as I mentioned, in South Carolina, fellow SEC East team wide receiver coach there tight end I have to see not a lot of names going on with that one wait and see who that uh, I don't think I know like I said Dewan Sider's name has popped up I don't think that's going to happen remember he was offered that tight end coach role under Mullen then went to Penn State. Talk of him last year, maybe joining the staff when Billy Napier is trying to build his, his initial staff. Of course, his name comes up again this time with another opening on the staff. Penn State shuffling titles, giving him more money as well. Do you want to get back in the state of Florida? I don't think that happens. So there we go. Giving you a little bit of update. It's not a name that's been thrown around out there as Kerry Colbert heads to the NFL, to the Denver Broncos, leaving an opening for the Gators and the wide receiver opening. So I know, you know, this is mostly going to have to be a belief in Billy Neighbor to make the right hires and decisions because, you know, just based off of the names that may look likely, they don't look to be initial home runs. So you're just going to have to have some faith. Belief in Billy Napier if you think these hires are going to work out. It doesn't mean they won't be home run hires in the end, but as far as name recognition, reputation of can't miss coaches, you're not getting that here. You know, they're not going to pull a veil over our faces and, and lie to ourselves a little bit. You know, this isn't a, you know, this isn't a, Corey Raymond and okay, so that's a home run type of hire. You know, these are n- names that you know everybody's gonna have to go. You got to go, you know, type it in on Google and and look up a a list of where they've been and what they've done for some of these names. Now I wondered, you know, does the, does the timeline play a part in this? Other schools out there, is it too late to pull a big name? This is odd. This is odd timing to have to go search for a replacement in the college ranks. You know, would you go to try and go to the NFL and maybe get somebody? You know, plenty did that plenty last year. Sean Spencer comes in. Rob Sell. So there we go. Giving you the latest I've been hearing. As far as names, and probably don't, don't, don't generate a whole lot of excitement <laughs> as it goes. Doesn't mean they won't work out, but man, you know, I just, uh, I know a lot of the, the talk out there will be, you know, unproven names. How will it work out? You know, the Pat- Patrick Tony was thought as this fast riser, this maybe can't miss young up and comer was not instant success. Maybe not sure it ever would have gotten there. Was he ready for the SEC? 
I think and those questions will kind of linger out there. All right, there we go. There we go. I like I I like I I, I kill you for the wide receiver coaching position. That'd be my top choice. I'm assuming he's interested. I'd love for him to be. I'd love for him to be on staff. I think it'd be a cool story. Got the got got the coaching background. Maybe recruiting would be a little bit of question there. You know, not not forming the relationships over years. You know, being in the NFL for so long, only being at Auburn last year. You know, you'd have to bring up the recruiting question part of it, but. That'd be about it, but that's a big part of it. <laughs> so I can't get the uh, gloss over it there. Guys, I know I spoke on it yesterday stuff, but I see it in the chat right there. The, a lot of Charlie Strong talk. I'm not under, I, I still don't understand why this is not 2008 anymore. I just, I can't talk myself into that anymore. Hasn't been part of a good defense in quite some time. I don't see any other big programs out there falling over themselves. You know, Alabama just had an opening day. You know, they're not bringing him in as DC. Miami just decided to hire somebody over him when Kevin Steele leaves to go to Alabama. There's a Charlie Strong's on staff. And they don't, they don't, Miami doesn't make him DC either. So I just he just he just hasn't been tied to a good defense in quite some time. I know part of it's been head coach, you know, and things change, you know. Will Muschamp not a good head coach, but a great defensive coordinator. But for whatever reason, Strong's really nice is not getting that chance. So I can't, can't sit here and say, you know, I mean, if he's not getting that chance anywhere else, you know, should should Florida be the one to give him the chance? Given the history, maybe, but I just I, I I don't I don't see it. Bull Gator, why Ike over Dallas? Still mad about that penalty at UT. <laughs> uh, I'd be happy with Dallas too, Bull Gator. Um, Um, probably just a pedigree of uh, of having a longer tenure, being in the NFL for so long as a wide receiver coach. So, and being that stable, being being able to be that that long of a coach in the NFL probably speaks to you know him being him him being a good coach, being you know, having the longevity of a wide receiver coach in the NFL. So I I, I believe that's probably where I lean with that. But kind of going to the recruiting part of it, you know, and plus Dallas Baker, you know, he, he hasn't been recruiting in the Southeast either. Um, and I still not, you know, kids around these days, they might know Dallas Baker, might. I hear you know, they wouldn't really. I mean, you know, they're not, you know, this is, it's not Tim Tebow, of, of course, with, with name recognition. But at least Baker's been at the college level, used to recruiting the last few years. So really the only reason why is because of the longevity of Ike Hilliard being a wide receiver coach. Alex Compton, hardwired. I see that. Y'all talking about Corey Raymond. I asked around today. Um, I wouldn't expect the move there. I think he's safe at Florida. There may have been some interest by some NFL teams. But from everything I can gather, he's going to stay put. But believe me, when these moves started happening, it just like you guys kind of pinged in my head too. All right, well, whoa, 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 what about Corey Raymond? So that's the latest I've got there. But all right, there we go. Giving you the, the latest right here on Gators Breakdown, trying to follow all these coaching changes right here for the Gators, the hires made. We'll certainly try and get back on, give the thoughts of the hires. 
Maybe we'll get something soon. Like, look, we got to get something soon, right? As I mentioned, spring practice, March the 4th, spring practice starts. You definitely do not want to go into spring practice <laughs> without these hires. So I think I think it's going to speed the process up for Billy Napier. And like I said, that, that could play a part in the timeline. Now, I don't think you settle – for a hire just because of the spring. And like, if you, if you think you can get a big name, I think the timeline would, would work itself out anyway. So like if for the college, it could hurt you just a bit, just because of the timeline, somebody not wanting to leave this late. If it's the NFL guy. Okay. Maybe you can go grab an NFL guy. But I think the timeline of spring practice starting very soon, these names, these next hires should be coming along pretty fast. All right, there we go. That'll do it for this episode of Gators Breakdown. I'm your host, David Waters. You can find me on Twitter at GatorDave underscore SEC. Guys and girls out there, thank you for joining me on this episode of Gators Breakdown.